Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Surviving Sales with Randy Chaffee. Uh, so Randy is the man of the hour, the man that's going to explain a lot for us, tell us about his journey and the things that he's learned. He is with a company called Source One Marketing. This is in the building and construction arena. That's the sector that he works in with over four decades of experience in post-frame metal and steep slope roofing. This guy's going to unpack all kinds of stuff for us today on what it's like to sell in that industry. Uh, post-frame has been around, for those of you that need the context, I had to look it up because I know nothing about building materials. I'm the least handy person in the world. So <laughs> I will hire out. I will outsource. <laughs> I will outsource this, right? Uh, post frame has been around for centuries and it's the leading construction style that provides an efficient way to build a strong, long lasting building. Uh, so he'll give you some more stuff around that maybe, but Randy also hosts another show just like this one called building wins. And this airs live. Randy, welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, my friend. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you having me. Looking oh, forward, man. man. The, the energy already. I'm geeked. I can't, I can't stand still. <laughs> yeah. For, for those of you that aren't ready for this, and I don't think any of you are, uh, Randy and I, we ride the same wave when it comes to energy. So this will be a lot of fun uh, to see how this goes. And I want to focus this around like the cold call, the call strategies, the warm calls, lukewarm calls. And I know that you cut your teeth in the old school cold call, and that was door knocking, door to door person to person, going to lunches, earning meetings that were face to face. So I know that you had to make a big pivot, but let's start at where you cut your teeth and how you got familiar with this meet lots of strangers, old school, cold call way back in the day. Perfect. Well, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 it was fun. And I'm so glad that I, I, I cut my teeth, as you said, in that world. But I'm equally, as we bounce ahead in a few minutes, so happy that I was able to hybrid that into, uh, into it's stuff like we're doing today, right? So smart. But, but I, I was the atypical or the typical, I guess, old school road warrior. I mean, it was packed a car with samples. I mean, I used to have the trunk full, back seat full. If somebody wanted to go to lunch, I had to say, well, can we drive your car? Because I have no room. I'm in my driver's side seat, samples and literature and stuff. And I just pound the roads, man. And a lot of it was calling ahead, call, and a lot of it was talking to existing customers. But when I'm out, if I'm in an area, I'm looking at, and this goes way back, I'm looking in uh, these weird things called yellow pages. I don't know if anybody ever heard of them. Oh, man, but, I remember uh, <laughs> the yellow pages and the white pages. Watch the out. The white pages. <laughs> oh, and, and believe me. No, I had nothing. I didn't have no little gadget. Were, in my you, were you that guy that was standing at a payphone? I was the guy. Dropping dimes, and dimes and quarters, and and then you you, you you got this card, right? This calling card with 947 numbers, and and you always pull up the one in the winter, and it's like a thousand below zero. Ice all over the payphone. Again, anybody young may look that up. Payphone. It's an interesting. Google it. Yeah. Um, so you know, dialing it like this with your hand, you know, your head against the window. So having 700 numbers to have it ring busy and then start over, or you get the gatekeeper. Well, hey, 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 hey J J James will be back in 20 minutes. Mm. So now you're left with, do I sit here for 20 minutes? Well, no, you drive up the road and in 20 minutes in, you're looking for another payphone someplace over and over and over. So, uh, yeah, that's where I started. But, and this other really funny thing, uh, GPS is an interesting thing again with our phone. Whoops. Right. Uh, I used MapQuest, you know, you, you, I, I had my old trip worked out. So I'd, I'd put in, I'm going to go directions, here. All the directions, right? In like right. a folder. Right. And, and I, I, I'd get one page done and I'd wad it and throw it on the floor with my coffee cups yeah. and then the next page. Right. And, uh, but you know, I literally, uh, it's so odd to me now, maybe because of what I do or what I've learned, but I'm one of these guys that will literally wander in, walk in the door. Hey, good morning. Maria, how are you? I'm Randy with Source One Market. I represent blah blah blah, whatever it is. And uh, uh, is who's who's the owner or who's the manager? Or because I didn't you, then you didn't even have the ability to Google that or to LinkedIn that, right? Yeah. You just walked in. I mean, you want to talk about cold? Yeah, those um, things. Those things tended to those things tended to be a little bit longer of a meeting. You know, the average cold call is pretty short. You're lucky to get five minutes with somebody mm -hmm. to nail down a longer conversation, right? these days. And right. that's, you know, that's pumping out volume. Uh, but, but when you're in person and you're driving and there's, you know, you spent the time and the gas and everything to go get it resources, all of it, you spend an hour at every meeting if you can, oh, and, you know, 
you, you spend that time very wisely and very strategically so that people aren't offended or shove you off too soon. You know, that's a completely different art form than what it is to cold call today. But you prefer lukewarm calls. How do you make somebody go from not knowing you to being a lukewarm call today? Well, it really in today's world, James, it's so easy because we have so much information. A, Google works, any of the other search engines, but LinkedIn works awesome for me. Yeah, LinkedIn's pretty yeah. good. I love it because you make, you, you, first place, I know that they're in the business. I know what they sell. I know yeah. that they sell my type of product. Sure, right? sure. And I know who the who the powers to be are, who the VP of sales is, who the, the purchasing agent is. You know these things going in. And it becomes lukewarm to even warm if you use LinkedIn to do the non-invasive, uh, you know, I, I will, let me back up. I will never on LinkedIn and I hate it and I get them every day and nobody, in case anybody's watching and want to LinkedIn me, don't send me a message. Thir the first one going, hey, can we schedule a talk next week, Thursday at three? I don't even know who the hell you are yet. So uh -huh. no, that's just a no, right? But you know, well, what they if they give you a context though? Wait, what if they give you a context and they're like, here's what I want to talk about. If yeah, if there's a will, yeah. will you take it? If there's a context, yes. Okay. So you're saying context. the blind, the random, the hey, blind, random hey, hey, I want to talk to you about what and for why. I mean, <laughs> yeah. right. What's, yeah. what's the agenda is like. The, exactly. The but I like to meet and greet uh, virtually first. You, you know, we share back and forth. How you doing? Love to just love to know people in the industry. If we never do anything together, that's okay too. Just want yeah, you to know me and I want to know you. an opportunity might arise later, right? Exactly. That's, you stay then, top of mind. We talk about exactly, that a lot. Exactly. And then all of a sudden they start following me then and they see my content on, 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 on uh, social media and maybe they catch my show. Maybe they catch me on a show like this. And all of a sudden, then when I finally reach out at whatever point feels like it's right for me, uh, they kind of know Randy. Maybe not personally, maybe not, we've never met, shook hand, bro hugged or anything like that, but they kind of know me. So that, that really, if it's, it's lukewarm to warm because they already know what I do. They know what I sell. They know what I'm about. They know the quirky, weird, goofy personality that I am. And uh, so it's all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. If you're going to be in the area, sure. Come on in. That'd be awesome. Lo love to meet you if nothing else. And that's what I have found with, you said about, it's very, very interesting about the old way of doing it. When, when we when made a cold, cold call, if I got in the door, I want an hour of your time because I just spent, like you said, gas, flights, miles to, to get here. Yeah. Uh, all, all, we've all gone through all that already without ever leaving home, so to speak. Never leave the home office. We, we've got through that, 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 that upfront stuff, whatever that is. And uh, so when we get together, the first thing I'm selling, and we've talked, well, a lot of people talk about this, I'm just selling the appointment to start with. I, mm. I'm not coming in to really sell you something, James, at this point, because you know what? It's our first I might not be right for you. You may not be right for me, but let's just see if there's an interest. If nothing else, what is the exact worst, what's the exact worst, worst case that would happen? Yeah. We both have a new friend in the industry. That's it. That's worst case. And we'll go from there. So yeah. It all, it all kind of starts right there. And that intro is interesting because you had to make a pivot in 2020, mm -hmm. everyone under the sun, no matter what you did for a living, if you were rubbing elbows face to face, if you were going door to door, every, all of that stopped. And everybody went to this virtual world where yep. video calls, Zoom, I think like, what was it? Like 6 million people jumped on Zoom, like <laughs> exactly. became Zoom customers right. in 2020 and 2021. You know, they were experiencing issues because they didn't expect that kind of volume. They, you know, the, right. the, the environment demanded a solution and the phone came back to popularity and people were starting to dial more, even people that had never done it before. So what's the, what's the approach that you've learned is most effective when you're calling one of your lukewarm we leads and, and do you have the same context every time or is it always a different context? It's, it's the same but fluid based on the customer. Mm. I try to read the customer pretty, pretty early in. And uh, uh, I, I realized we talked off air that uh, I try to be authentic in myself. And you pretty much always get me the way I, the way I am. If we were sitting together, we'd be talking exactly yeah. the way we're talking right now. This is what you'll get if, if you're a customer of mine. You're going to get the exact same, this is me. But I, I, I usually start out with, very simply, I've been in this industry for a long time. I got four plus decades of experience. I don't know if we got anything that makes sense or not, but 
but maybe we can help each other and maybe we can't let's so there's no pressure it's a real no pressure start of the sale for me uh because i'm i'm a very b2b kind of guy this is not a a a, a same same day close uh i'm looking at people i I've, I've got customers that i went through kids graduations uh that are now running the business right what's your, what's your what's your average sales cycle starting with a new, you know a new customer and on you know it it, de it depends a lot but typically uh four to five sales calls okay four to five calls not necessarily like 30 days or 60 days no, it's however it, it's it's there do they decide that urgency do they decide that you know all and then and then how do you get them to that point they will but see one of the advantages that i have as a as a, as a manufacturer's rep as an agency we handle many different manufacturers all within the same genre if you will uh -huh. so i really it's it's easier for me than maybe a guy that's a sales company guy for a specific company because you kind of are limited to if you don't need this product or have no interest in this product go golfing four times a week with the rep from somebody else and have no desire and there's not many places to go with that maybe with i look at is i bring one four plus year four plus decades of experience in your business I bring up a, a myriad of product lines that are top name product lines in, in the industry. So let's see if there's anywhere here that something fits. Because see, all I need, James, is now I may never have all your business, even though I have a lot of customers that I do have all their business and, and thank God for that. But the first thing I just need to do is I need to be part of your team, right? I need to be your guy on something. If I can be your guy on something, We'll continue to knock them off as you see fit. And at some point, once you do that, you build the trust and then you build the friendship. And that's an interesting concept because I think a lot of people think of friendship first and then build the trust. In my book, you got to build the trust first. Yeah, trust uh, and, and, trust kind of earns the friendship. It's exactly. like the doorway to the friendship, right? Exactly. Uh, some so. people, though, quite – I mean, and, you know, we can definitely t dice this up, even though, you know, we're, we're focused on cold calls here, but – you know, or, or calls in general, I guess, because they're not always cold calls. Right. Sometimes there's context behind them and that makes them less cold. I wouldn't say that right. they're, you know, hot leads just because right. they liked something or, you know, right. reacted to something, but they're at least a lead that's engaged, right? So right. there's a, a lukewarm sort of feel to them. But I think some people quite literally think, oh, relationships don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to say that I don't think relationships are required for sales, but I certainly think they help. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what's your longest customer and how did that relationship begin? Oh, my longest customer probably is, I'd have to think about this man. It is, is over 30 years, 30 years. And you yes. started that conversation off in person, I assume, in but person. there were lots of calls. Yeah. Lots of calls. Uh, I, I've got a customer I can think of right now that I called on him for six years and, wow. and, and sold him nothing. So, uh, so six years. Uh, so I always wonder about people that have been in sales for as long as you have, because there was a time before cell phones when mm -hmm. calls came to the desk, you mm -hmm. had to know the extension, you had to ask somebody to get to that person. And then there was this cell phone boom and everything changed. How right. often do you call cell phones in your industry? And are people pretty receptive to that? Oh, I almost all the time. I'm, I'm a big, I, I, I call people cell phones all day long. If I, if I have their number, yeah, I'll text them. Uh, or, or email them. And I started doing a lot during, and I learned to do this during the, uh, the, the, the world of lockdown, as I like to call it. Yeah. It was a great learning experience for me. Not the one, not necessarily the way I wanted to go through that, but hey. um, you take you what got you to play the hand that we were dealt there. You, t you play it and, and some of you come out and you learn some good things and some don't, but I do a lot of video text too. I do a video text. I do uh, email uh, video. Wait, when you say video text, are you telling me that you send videos via text message to your prospects? I will pick the phone up and say, James, Hold Randy. Yep. I'll just like this. James, hey, it's Randy. What are you doing? I'm just sitting here having a <clears throat> Dr. Pepper thinking about you. Did you get the Did you get the quote I sent you? I, you know, and depending if I know him, yeah, I might, you know, I'm, I'm a little yeah. bit. I am what I am. Say, I'm really disappointed that I haven't got a truckload order yet, but you know, you could call me, you know, whatever, just BS with them a little bit. Sure. Um, uh, I, I like to tell this story just because I like the story, but it's real short, but I went to get a uh, takeout for, for the wife and I, and she runs my office. And as I'm sitting at the, at the bar and having a, a glass of Pinot, as I wait for, for the burgers and whatever to come, I saw this guy, right? Good friend of mine, young kid. I've knew him way back. 
I pick my phone up. No, who knows why? My head just works in weird ways. I'm always thinking about how do I, what's the next thing to do? Yeah. What can I be doing? Took a, never said a word. Took a picture of the wine bottle or glass. I turned the phone around and I go, this is all I did, James. I go, and hit send. I love you because he's my brother. I love him. And, it, you know, I, I'll do quirky things like that. I'll, I'll, I'll do, I, I've had times where I say something that doesn't want to, I, uh, if I got a quote, I'm going to email it to somebody. I'll do a quick video. I'll hook it up on my little stand here and I'll say, Hey James, I'm, I'm emailing right then. This email is a PDF with the quote line item, uh, number seven and number nine are the two things you were really interested in. Yeah. And that's what you want to focus on. How about I call you tomorrow? Have a great day. Boom. Send it. I do, I do a lot of that kind of stuff too, because that's pretty creative. I think well, people would be responsive to that because there's this like comfort level with our technology yeah. space yes. at this point. Nobody does. I think, I think that there's a certain person, a certain type of person that might feel like that's a bit too much, mm -hmm. but if you've been working with somebody for a long amount of time, or if you've already got momentum in a deal that's new, I think you've earned the right to contact them in unique and creative ways. And I think this whole situation between 2019 and 2020 and now has created this like amazing push for creative outreach. At mm -hmm. this point. I'm not saying it has to be personalized or automated. I'm saying any type of creative touch tends to go much further. And then the calls and the emails and the social tends to be that much more effective. Oh, uh, no doubt. And I think... You, you also have a pretty good, I have a pretty good belief that this is not going to be a screw up if I do this, because if I find you on LinkedIn and you're doing a lot of content yourself, you're, you're, you're engaging with people, Yeah. then my assumption is, and I'm usually never wrong with this one. I think it's a pretty ironclad assumption that you're not going to be against stepping over that line a little bit of sending you a video text or sending, because you're already showing me that you are a, 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 a modern day person in, in the world of communication. Now, if I can't even find you on LinkedIn, you don't exist in social media, you don't exist anywhere. I'm probably going to just pick the phone up and do a little more of the old school way, probably at least until I get to know them. So. Yeah. What, so let's talk about that old school way and compare it to this thing now that's happening. What's a great thing that you did in the past that's kind of changed and morphed and now you either don't use it at all or it's changed quite a bit and you use it in a different way now? I don't I only think the only thing that's changed is <clears throat> seldom. And I would say never because I learned a long time ago. That's a long, long time. Don't say but never. <laughs> never. Almost. Almost never. How's that? Almost never will I walk in to somebody that I don't know who they are uh, and, and introduce myself out of the blue to some gatekeeper and attempt to walk through that thing. Because I feel like today's world, that doesn't play as well as it used to. Uh, they just need a little warming up. Maybe not much. It'd be like a, like, like a, maybe there's certain major league pitchers that only need three pitches and they can head out to the mound. They just can't go out with no pitch at all, right? You, you got to warm that up a little bit. So I, I attempt to to do that, but but I did learn I'm very, I can do that if I need to. Talking to gatekeepers, and that's one of the things that we all think about in the world of sales, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, they're not, it's not that complicated, even the tough ones, if you just are authentic and real and come in with some confidence but not cocky right? It's not that hard. People want to help you. Yeah. I, I think you and me and Morgan and many other like frontliners have learned that gatekeepers actually want to help you. They mm -hmm. are there to help you. If you talk to them the right way, they will help you. That's their job. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They're not there to be the enemy. And a lot of people are afraid that their job is to keep you away from Mr. Big, right? Yeah. No, the job may be to keep you from Mr. Big if you don't have a purpose for being here. But if you have a purpose for being there and you know, it's a funny, funny thing. People respond very well to, wow, I could sure use some help. Mm. You know, man, I, yeah, I remember help. Morgan used to call this the lost at Disney world. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, he's just like, that. can you help me? Right. And yeah. it was very like, yeah. you know, can you, is this, can you give me a hand for a second? Right. right. I'm looking for this. Per I lost my mom. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> 
I love that. I lost at Disney World. I'm going to remember that one. That's yeah, amazing. yeah. It's but, it's really real. And I think that people forget that these people are compensated to help you and get mm-hmm. you to where you need to go. Right. It's just not always a priority for the person that's receiving that message through that filter. Right, right. Yep. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I find that, that you, you treat them because they are real people. They're just got to, they got a job to do. So yeah. respect that job. And, and you, uh, uh, you, you have a very specific skill set that I think I, I share with you and there's other people out there that are like us, but then there's this whole other cohort that I don't think they've developed this characteristic and it comes with time and it comes with practice and a consistent development of the skill set. But dude, you don't use anything canned. You don't have any scripts. Everything comes off the hip. How'd you get like this? Oh, Again, back years. to I mean, that's a long time. Four, four, four plus decades of doing it. Uh, it, it it's um, I don't think I I no, I don't use a script. I'm I am fully unscripted with any sales call I make, whatever way I make it, whatever uh, medium I use. Uh, partially, it's because of confidence. I've been doing it a long time. I know my products. I know my industry, and I know that. And I think this is key. I don't fake when I come in to see you. I truly believe that while there's a lot of people that are competitors have a good product, good manufacturers, good people. But I truly believe that at the end of the day, the one thing you won't get with them that you'll get with me is Randy. And Mm. I believe that at the end of the day, I'm going to take your call on Saturday night at eight o'clock. I'll take it on Sunday afternoon when I'm on the boat, if if you happen to need me. And so I truly believe that I I think, I I feel that I can do a great job for you. And so uh, I'm not shy to, I'm not shy to make the communication. I'm not shy, shy to make the the handout. And I'm not shy when it's time. I think that's key. <clears throat> when it's time to ask for the order. Uh, I'm all about personalization. I'm all about building the trust and the friendship. Sure. Uh, but I'm never shy to say, dude, James, we've done this for, I bought you 12 pieces. Yeah, way I talk. I bought you 12 pizzas. We've had eight beers and nine steaks. I took you golfing three times. You can give me an order. I mean, right. when are we going to make this magic happen? Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, and, and the one, you know, the one thing I like is I love this. You, this one works. And and because it, it's true, it's like you get to the end of this thing. Okay. I've, 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 I've gave you samples of everything. We've quoted you everything. We've talked to your, co- we've done all these things. And you said, yes, 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 yes. Everything, everything seems right. I think you trust that I'll take care of you. Yes. you. Okay. The only thing that we can do now is to take a shot at this because I can't prove that any of all this that I've just done over the last six months to get to this point could all be hocus pocus, Mm -hmm. right? So I have to have you take that one leap of faith now, if we could, please. But you have this, uh, but you have this like confidence about you when you deliver these, I'm sure that you talk to people the same way that you talk to me, Mm -hmm. right? I almost feel like there's an interview more than it is a sale in this. And it's partly due to your tone, but then also due to the way that you like move the needle in a profound way. It's not necessarily aggressive, but it's not necessarily passive. It just stands out. How much of this is delivery and rehearsal and just you've done it for so long? And how much of it is just your ability to like sense where the deal is and move forward or let go? I think all of the above. I, I think over time and over experience, you do figure out <clears throat> stuff that don't work. Oh, yeah, I feel me. like sellers get tired of it. I feel like we, we get to a point in the funnel and we're like, man, I can't wait for this to be over. Like- <laughs> right. I think you can. But see, if you make it fun, you make it interesting, and you make each sales call a jump on James show type of call, right? I mean, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on live here. This is, this is the deal. I'm, I just came out of the green room on Johnny Carson. It's ready to turn the cameras and the bikes. <laughs> Whoa, on. that's go. a Carson. Ca- Yo, thank you, huh? dude. You like that? Right. So what, what if you look at it that way, every sales call, whether it's on the phone, text, video, live in person, it's, it's all the Johnny Carson show. You know, yeah. you gotta be on your game and you, you've got to, you got to deliver the goods and see I, two things. I had a guy, a buddy of mine, asked me once. He said, "You've always sold. I've always been pretty good at this." But when he said, "When did you go from pretty good to pretty gooder?" If that's a word. Yeah. I says, "When I one when I stopped selling. I don't oh, sell anything." That was anything. huge. That was huge for for me and John. Yep. Said that he's had a lot of sellers that that is a big awakening yeah. for. The yeah. best sellers don't sell was yeah. said to me really early when I got yes. it. Yes, it's it's so right on to you. Just nobody, 
nobody wants to be sold, but everybody wants to buy. Everybody likes to buy stuff. I say this we all just the want time. Stuff. We it's all want stuff. It's a greasy car salesman feeling. Yeah. It'll make people run away straight. Run away. <laughs> but if you just assist me in, in what I'm doing and trying to get where I already and, – and, and the other thing I, I always keep in my head, James, is that when I'm with you as a customer, prospective customer at this point, there is one thing. You know I'm a sales guy. Okay, so you know at the end of the day, I'm really – I do want to build friendships. I do want to build relationships. I do want all this long term. I do because I, I live for that. But dude, I do want to sell you some stuff too. Yeah, right? I, I mean, it, it's it, and it sounds bad, right? But it's one of the you have to like say it without saying it is a big thing mm -hmm. on social. We see it all the time. Tell yeah. me you're from the '80s. Tell me you were born in the '80s right, without right. saying you were born in the '80s, right? Right. You see this stuff all the time. Exactly. This is like this is like be selling without being selling <laughs> exactly exactly you know and it just just in in especially in my world but even in more of a uh, a uh uh c to you know maybe you know a, a, a b to c or whatever it, it's different slightly but not really i i recorded an interview yesterday to, to drop next week with a guy that's one of the, a leading uh trainer in that world and even with that world it's still changed to yeah. where even if it's the three hour close, so to speak, it's still look at this, James, maybe this is not going to be right for you, right? Let's walk through these steps and see if this is a, a good for both of us. And that's the way I, 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 I was with a new customer last week, first call, a couple phone calls. And I said, look, I just want to, cause you use the word interview. I think I need to interview you as well as you interview me. Let's yeah. just see. I got to be right call. for you. You got to be right for me right. too. I, I, and I told him, I says, I have no samples here. It's me because this might not be right. So let, we take all that pressure off, right? We get to become friends a little as much as you can at first visit. You get to build some trust and see if it fits because you know what? It may not fit for me as a manufacturer. You just may not be the right customer or more importantly, probably I may not be the right supplier for you. You may have no interest. You may not like my product, whatever, whatever, whatever. But all that matters today is we start to trust thing a little bit and start yeah. to or trusting a lot and start the friendship a little. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think trust is where like circling back, like full circle to the beginning, right? We have to have the trust first before we can earn mm -hmm. the friendship, just like we have to have the trust first before we can earn the opportunity. And you know, when I, when I did my course, we were in Las Vegas in uh, late 2019, early 2020. And I remember saying on the course when we were filming, Everybody thinks that opportunities are created or uncovered or, you know, discovered in some way. It's not true. Every opportunity that ever closed was earned every mm -hmm. step of the way. And part of that trust leading to that friendship is what's the beginning path of that step-by-step -step process right. that earns every opportunity. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, because we're running low on time yep. and I've got a question. The, the, how do you handle people that they just vanish on you because ghosting is big in our industry in SaaS and mm -hmm. technology sales, Yes, but you're in building materials. Does this happen often? Not really. Not, not near as much as you would probably experience. It, it can happen. Uh, they, the one thing in my world is most of, most of my customers are brutally honest and they'll pretty well tell you, look, I'll, I'll keep your card. I'll, I'll, I'll keep your samples here, but not a priority right now, right now. And, and, so uh, I've, I've learned with those people, I don't over push those people. They never go out of my, uh, my tickler file, if you will. Ah, so you stay phone. with them. That's oh, the yeah. key. Yeah, I can, I'll stay with them. them. They may, I've, all, I've said before, I've said they, they will get moved. I touch and move. Whatever happens, every time I put it in my calendar, it's going to get touched and moved for something. But uh, at the end of the day, I will always follow up, even if it's four years from now, two years from now things change right so well i want to thank you for coming and sharing all your information and your wisdom with everybody that's in the room thank you everybody that came to learn from randy today make sure that you sign up next week as we join surviving sales to interview another guest and figure out how they became a sales survivor thanks buddy have a great afternoon thanks for everybody you got it, brother. For thank you my friend see you next time